Good evening all. Hope you're well. Apparently smoking my gorgeous Astley Dublin of sorts. Interesting shape, the way it curves in and out there. Very, very nice pipe. Nice and grainy silver band. And in it, I'm smoking some BS759, which is a Balkan Sobrani match by My Own Blend, which is available at the Danish Pipe Shop. And um, I can say that this is a very, very superior blend. And although I've smoked Bolton Sobrani, it's not a blend that I could say that I'm familiar with. I don't smoke it often. I haven't smoked it in a long time. I do have a tin in my cellar somewhere, but uh, I haven't cracked it. And um, on the strength of this, um, more often than not, the originals are better than the matches. If that's the case here, then it, it must be a lovely blend. But the match is so good on its own, even without comparing it to Balkan Sobrani. I don't really feel the need to chase after Balkan Sobrani, because this is lovely. It's a delicious blend. It's currently uh, being put in my pipe a little bit ahead of Northwoods for the moment, anyway. Most blends which I like, uh, which I start off with, uh, Latakia blends, eventually I do go back to Northwoods, but for the moment, perhaps it's a novelty factor, but for the moment, the smoothness and the musty sweet sourness of this blend is fantastic. If I would uh, sum it up and give you some kind of a comparison that you may be familiar with. I would say it's somewhere in between Penzance and Special, Atle uh, Special Latakia Flake. Not quite as smoky and rich as Penzance, and not quite as Virginia Ford as Special Latakia Flake. So it's somewhere in between, and it really hits a sweet spot. I'll certainly be trying to get some more of this. It's good. Well, I've just been uh, watching Mike at Briar Blues. He's in full rant mode about VRTV. I must be honest, as, as much as I um, support VRTV and I'm very, very committed to it, I haven't uh, quite felt the need to rant about it. I did a video yesterday um, just explaining a few things based on my understanding but Mike is clearly very very passionate um, he's clearly very very passionate about it and perhaps he's fielded more inquiries than I have um, or seen more videos than I have uh, criticizing or asking questions about VRTV Well, what I would say is this. Um, I think if you've been on YouTube long enough, you learn that that's the nature of YouTube. The skill of communication is largely lost in social media. Not completely. Um, it's obviously really dependent on <coughs> excuse me on people's personal attitude that's where it all starts how they then communicate that attitude is a different matter so people who generally will uh, troll and look at anything on social media and just do what they can to pull it down to bring it down a lot of those people that's their nature and uh, Nothing that you say is going to change that. But I think a lot of the people, in this case with BRTV, are genuinely curious. 
which is why um, I put my video up last night because there's been a bit of a lack of clarity. Phil is obviously somebody who doesn't um, broadcast, but that would have been the ideal situation if Phil um, would have broadcast um, a video clearly setting out the modus operandi of BRTV. Um, I think that would have gone some way um, to uh, clarifying it and obviously it um, would have also meant that people wouldn't have had um, expectations beyond um, what was reasonable. But YouTube is made up of lots of different people and uh, if people don't want to broadcast, that's absolutely fine. Which is why I did the video yesterday. And, uh, and why each of these nine presenters, or ten presenters, or twelve presenters, have all, well, most of them, have tripped in with their own little version of what's expected. If you want to hear it from the horse's mouth, just go to BRTV, go to the Briar Report, and uh, there's two pages there clarifying um, setting out um, the raison d'etre and the modus operandi of um, BRTV in as much as you can at this stage. But I don't think it's anything to get upset about. I think people have um, limited understanding of what it is until they see it. We all are, are a little bit in the dark. We, you know, we, we, we haven't seen the website ourselves yet. So curiosity and confusion is understandable to some extent. And I do sympathize with those people who genuinely um, want to understand the product better. But um, like anything new, you just have to wait till it comes out and then you'll suck it and see. Um, just see what it is once it comes out. I think we're all going to be in a similar boat. Um, in terms of our contributions so far, um, we've all... Um, sent an introductory video to um, to Phil, which is going to be on the site to start with. Um, and in terms of adding new videos, I don't know how that's going to work either until I see the website. Um, I don't know if for now we're still going to have to be sending Phil the videos and he will upload it, or whether we'll be able to directly upload it. These are all things which we will find out as we go along. Um, and I've um, kind of um, found it to be a little bit like sort of driving in the dark to some extent. Phil is very expressive in, in his communications. He's a, a quite an amazing writer, um, and when you get an email from him, it uh, you know it challenges uh, Shakespeare. Um, so he is more than happy to put pen to paper or finger to keyboard. But it's still you can never compare it to actually testing it out yourself and uh, playing with the front end, the, the software that we see, the, 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 the website once it's up and running. So we're all in the dark to some extent. I don't think it's anything to get into a tizzy about. As I say, that's what YouTube is like. Some people react in different ways, different people react in different ways. But the bottom line is, people are curious. Some people will be dubious, and that's fine too. And uh, the, bene the, the proof of the pudding will be in the eating. We'll see. We will see. Once the site comes up, and we're all excited about it, um, I think it's due to go live in a few days. Um, so we're all very excited about it. We'll wait and see. Once it's up and running, like I said yesterday, I think we have to um, be patient uh, because the initial sort of beta version, which is essentially what it is, it's a beta version, it's probably a very early beta version. Might be a little bit clunky to start with, but I think it's, it's pigeon steps, it's baby steps, um, and we have to respect it as that. Once we get beyond that stage, hopefully, if there's enough um, hits if there's enough footfall um, and there's, there's you know start to get some kind of funding generated hopefully it'll become more slick 
uh, more professional um, and it will provide all the uh, sort of uh, user experience that we're all looking for like anything on the web it's never going to make everybody 100 percent satisfied but hopefully if it makes everybody 50 or 60 or 70 percent satisfied that would be an excellent result Um, I revisited a couple of the pipes that I'd made. Um, I, I didn't really want to get into making a full blown pipe today. Um, so I decided to just revisit a couple of pipes. Pipe 38, you might remember, was a, a long shanked, well not so long, but quite a thick shanked uh, billiard. But I wasn't happy with the shape. So I decided to do a little bit of tweaking. Um, let's see if I can find a picture of it on my phone to give you an idea what it looked like so this was the, uh, the pipe beforehand so, uh, there we go uh, I just wasn't happy with the shape it was all a little bit too uh, not quite defined so this is what I've done First of all, I've made the shank a lot more um, uniform, as it should be. I've shortened the the pot, the, the the chamber a little bit, and I've sculpted this a lot more. So there's a little bit of definition here. Um, so you got a little bit of a sort of shape there. Much more definition than there was before. And that's something which is quite new for me. Um, I do see on a lot of the high-end carvers that um, the bowl... Let me take a look at that one. you got it there as well, not as pronounced on this one. I do see on some of them anyway that it's very, very pronounced. It's quite pronounced there, but it's not really over there which is essentially uh, what somebody said to me is when I think it was Chris Eldridge if you imagine when you're carving a bowl if you took away the shank and you would be making like a goblet shape almost so that definition should be there and then the shank should emerge from the side of that as opposed to that kind of thing but you know I've been looking at a lot of my pipes and actually you know I think all carvers do things their own way and I actually um, so you can see it's got a little bit of a, more of a definition there. Um, I'm I, I'm not quite made up myself which I prefer, um, but I'll, I'll go with what I prefer. To be honest, um, once you get used to doing it, it's it's quite easy to do. Um, but I'm just not sure if that's better or not. Beforehand, this was this little sort of. You can see that little V there. That was just uniform beforehand, and I've just sort of chiselled that carved that out um, let me know what you think about that whether it's better with or without this uh, little groove running under, alongside the bowl um, and I've also made the stem and shank a little bit more uniform so it's really all virtually seamless I've re-sanded the whole thing and um, finished it again and it really looks amazing um, beforehand I had this down as a seconds I wasn't happy with the shaping of it but I'm a lot happier now and I'm no longer going to call this a seconds, despite the fact that it still has these little sort of bits in the grain, which are little little sort of I don't know what you want to call that, but it's it's actually gaps in the grain. Um, but that's natural, and I don't think it's a a fault as such. Whereas the carving beforehand, the shaping, I wasn't happy with. Um, so I'm a lot happier with it now. So if anybody's interested, that is available. And the next one I did was. The poker, which has got a fantastic grain, but I've actually added, I found it was a little bit boring with the black stem, and I've um, added a different stem to it. There we go, it just jazzes it up a little bit. The bit's really, really comfortable, nice and rounded. It's nice and slim at the bite zone. It's 9mm of course.
This is the original one. So it's a bit more of a chunky kind of look to it, and also it's black, of course. So if you're a traditionalist, then you might prefer that. Alternatively, a little bit more modernized, if you like. A nice swirly stem there. I've left it with a bit of a beveled edge. I could have done either, but I think it works well with the shaping of this. So you've got this sort of bulbous area and then it goes down again on both ends. Um, and I just think it looks really cool. The grain on this is fantastic, it really is. This actually could have made a beautiful blowfish pipe, the grain on it. So both of these are, are available. Um, if you prefer the black stem, you can have it. Um, just, you know, let me know which one you prefer. Um, so that's really uh, my little update for today. Um, once again, just I think we all need to be patient with BRTV, I'm sure. Um, it will be fine in the end. Um, no need to get hot under the collar about it. Mike, I understand your passion and I understand why you're ranting about it. Um, but I think if we just all sit back and wait and see how it goes. Thanks very much, everybody. Catch you on the next one.